Hello everybody, this is Mr. McNair and this is a video on division properties of exponents. <clears throat> to start off, let's talk about um, what 4 to the 5th means again. Um, if we were to expand that out, we know that that is 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, right? And 4 to the 3rd, if we expanded that, that'd be 4 times 4 times 4. Now, if we decided that we wanted to divide 4 to the 5th over 4 to the 3rd, well, technically that means that we're going to be dividing their expanded forms also. So pairs of 4s would do what in the numerator and denominator? Cancel, right? So that would leave us with 4 to the 2nd. Now, if you notice from the beginning of the problem to the end, that the exponents, all we really did was subtract them. 5 minus 3 is 2. Now that property is called the quotient of powers property. To divide powers with the same base, very important, with the same base, you subtract the exponents. All right, let's practice that a couple of times. So in A here, we have 6 to the 5th over 6 to the 4th. Those have the same base, so the base is going to stay the same, and we're just going to subtract the exponents. And you can simplify from there. 6 to the 1st, that's 6. Same thing with part B. These have the same base. Base is A. And then you subtract the exponents. 9 minus 5 is 4. Okay? Part C, same thing. Once again, they have the same base of X. And then here, the exponents are both 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. We know that anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay? All right. And then lastly, D. We have y cubed over y to the fifth. Once again, the uh, bases are the same. And you subtract the exponents. Now be careful here. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. And if you recall, you're not allowed to leave a negative exponent in um, your expression. So we have to simplify it by taking the reciprocal and making the exponent positive. So that would be 1 over y to the positive second. Okay. Next, the power of a quotient property. Now, I'm willing to bet that you know what we're going to do with this 4. We're going to distribute it into both the numerator and denominator. So that would be 2 to the 4th over 3 to the 4th. Now, the reason that we're allowed to do that is because 2 thirds to the 4th power really means 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds. So how many 2's do we have? Well, we have 4. How many, four, or how many 3's do we have? We have 4 of those, too. So, this is called the power of a quotient property. The power of a quotient property says when a power, well, that should say exponent, when an exponent is on the outside of a quotient, distribute the exponent to everything in the numerator and denominator. All right. When an exponent is on the outside of a quotient, distribute the exponent to everything in the numerator and denominator. Okay. So, in example 2a, we have an exponent of 3, and that 3 can be distributed to the numerator and denominator. So that'd be 1 to the 3rd over 4 to the 3rd. Right? And we know 1 to the 3rd power is 1. 4 to the 3rd power is 64. B same deal. We have an exponent of 3 on the outside that distributes to both the numerator and denominator. So we have negative 3 to the third. Remember when you have a negative base, to make sure you keep it in parentheses, and y to the third in the denominator. If we simplify that, negative 3 to the third is negative 27. y to the third, well, that's y to the third. All right, next, c. Hopefully you can see this well. The exponent here is a negative 3. That's a negative 3 on the outside. Now, I don't really suggest that you take a negative exponent and distribute it into a quotient. Um, one thing that you could do is apply the property that we talked about um, when we were talking about negative exponents. To get rid of a negative exponent, you take the reciprocal of it. So this will be 4 sevenths to the positive third. Then we could take that positive 3 and distribute it into the quotient. So that'd be 4 to the third over 7 to the third. 
we know 4 to the third is 64 and 7 to the third is 343 all right um, last one on this page. Uh, here we have an exponent of negative 5. Once again, I don't really suggest taking a negative exponent and distributing it into a quotient. So we're going to take the reciprocal so we can make it positive. All right, the reciprocal of 1 over x, well, the reciprocal of that is x over 1. But technically, x over 1 simplifies to what? Well, that's just x. x to the fifth. And x to the fifth is x to the fifth. Okay? Great. Let's move on. Now this problem I like because it kind of combines everything that we've been working on the last couple of days. Um, you have two fractions that you're multiplying here. 3x cubed y over 4x. You're multiplying this fraction times this fraction, 12x squared y squared over y cubed. All right, these are the two fractions that you're multiplying together. All right, now you multiply fractions that have powers, just like you multiply any fraction. Like, for example, let's say you are multiplying 1 half times 7 eighths. All you would do there is multiply straight across. 1 times 7 is 7, 2 times 8 is 16, and then you would see if you could reduce this if you possibly could. And that one doesn't reduce, but um, if you could reduce it, you would. Well, here, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to multiply straight across. 3 times 12 that's 36. x cubed times x squared, that's x to the fifth. Remembering that when you multiply powers with the same base, add the exponents. y times y squared, that's y cubed. Now you do the same thing in the denominator. Um, well, this coefficient of 4, well, that's the only coefficient we have, so we'll bring that over. We only have the 1x, and we only have y to the third there. All right, now we want to reduce, we want to simplify. 36 over 4, that simplifies to what? 9. x to the fifth, x to the fifth over x. Well, that reduces to, or simplifies to, x to the fourth, because this has an exponent of 1, right? And then lastly, we have this y cubed over y cubed. All right, there's a couple things that you could do with that. Um, I personally, looking at y cubed over y cubed, I would look at it and say, well, they're the same in both the numerator and denominator, so I would just cancel them out. And my final answer would be 9x to the fourth. All right, because whenever you have the same thing in the numerator and denominator and they're being multiplied together, you could just cross them out. Now, some people would say, well, I would say, well, y cubed over y cubed, subtract the exponents, so you have y to the 0. And that's true. But you would have to simplify even further. You have 9x to the 4th. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And we know anything that's multiplied by 1 is itself. So you still get 9x to the 4th, but you just have to make sure you continue with the steps and simplify all the way. All right, next. This one, um, short example here. You take that 3, distribute it into the parentheses. So we would have 3 to the 3rd, x to the 6, over y to the 3rd. And then, once again, simplify as much as you can. 27x to the 6 over y cubed. All right. Now, example 5, I'm taking part of what we did in example 4 and part of what we did in example 3, putting it together. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is deal with this exponent 2. This 2 has to distribute to everything in the parentheses, everything in that quotient. Now, this first part, we're just going to leave this alone. All right? Let's just write it down. 2xy over 3x to the negative second y to the fifth times, let's go ahead and distribute this 2 now. So 4 to the second is 16. x squared is x squared. And y cubed, well, that's going to be to the sec y cubed squared is y to the six you multiply those exponents. Now we're going to go ahead and multiply straight across, just like we did before. 2 times 16, that's 32. x times x squared is x to the third. And we only have this one y here, so we're going to just bring that over. We only have the one coefficient of 3, so we'll bring that over. We just have this x to the negative second, nothing to combine with that. And y to the fifth times y to the sixth, that's y to the eleventh. 
All right, let's simplify. 32 over 3, does that reduce? No, it doesn't. So we're just going to keep it as 32 over 3. Do not, do not, do not, do not try to put that as a mixed number. Um, if it doesn't simplify to be a whole number, keep it as a simplified fraction um, if it has to be uh, improper. Do not put it as a mixed number, okay? Um, next, we have this uh, x, let's see, we have x cubed over x to the negative second. Now, again, when you're dividing powers with the same base, you subtract the exponents. So we're taking 3 and subtracting from it negative 2. So be careful here. A minus a negative becomes a what? A plus. So this becomes x to the fifth. All right, 3 minus negative 2 is positive 5. All right, now whenever you're dealing with quotients, always start your, your powers in the numerator. Put this x to the fifth in the numerator. Always, always start it off in the numerator. If you need to change it later, we will, but start it in the numerator. Um, lastly, we have this y over y to the 11th. Remember, this is y to the first. So again, we're going to subtract the exponents. So 1 minus 11, 1 minus 11 is negative 10. So that's y to the negative 10. Now, can we leave our answer like this? No, because we have a negative exponent involved. So everything that has a negative exponent, we have to move. Okay, the 32, that stays where it's at. X to the fifth, that stays where it's at. The 3 on the bottom, that stays where it's at. The only thing that's moving is this y to the negative tenth. It moves to the bottom and becomes a positive exponent. All right, and there we go. All right, last problem. This problem I like to call the mammoth of the power problems. This one you're probably pretty much combining everything. Um, once again, if you notice, we have a negative two exponent out here, negative two. And I don't really, I don't really suggest that you take a negative exponent and distribute it into a quotient. So let's go ahead and get rid of the negative exponent by flipping this quotient. Okay. So the first part, the first entity, we're going to keep it the same. 4xy over 2x to the negative 1, y to the negative 3 times. We're going to get rid of this negative exponent by taking the reciprocal. So that's going to be 3xy over 2xy squared, now to the positive 2. Okay? To get rid of a negative exponent, you take the reciprocal. All right. Now, we have this positive 2 that we can distribute into the parentheses. And make sure that it goes to everything in the parentheses. Every little piece in there. All right? So once again, that first part, this 4xy part, is going to stay the same. 4xy over 2x to the negative 1, y to the negative 3, times, and let's distribute that 2 into the parentheses. 3 squared is 9, x to the second, y to the second, 2 squared is 4, x to the second, y to the fourth. All right, now let's go ahead and multiply straight across. All right, 4 times 9, I'll move it up to the top here, that's 36. x times x squared, that's x cubed. y times y squared, that's y cubed. And down here, we have 2 times 4, that's 8. x to the negative 1 times x to the second, that's x to the first. And y to the negative third times y to the fourth, that's y to the first. All right, from there, once again, we're going to simplify. 36 over 8, does that reduce? Yeah, um, that reduces down to 9 halves. x cubed over x to the first. Once again, we subtract the exponents, so that's going to be x to the second. And then y cubed over y to the first, that's going to be y to the second. All right, remember, always, always, always put your powers in the numerator first. If it's a negative exponent, we'll move it, but always start them off in the numerator. Okay? Now, we have no exponents in our final answer, and our fraction is completely reduced, so that is our final answer. 9x squared y squared over 2. Okay? Hopefully this video has helped you out, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day.